All right. We'll call this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District for order. It is 30 on Thursday, January 25th, 2024. Uh, we'll do the roll. Uh, ben. Here. Tony. Here. Mike. Here. Jason. Here. Ruth. Here. I'm Nick. Chairman, I'm here too. So I'll go to the next agenda item, number three, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion. Oh, shoot. Do I get to start all over again? New minutes. All right. We're going to call this monthly meeting to order again with the mic on. <clears throat> all right. Uh, it's the Scarborough Sanitary District, January 25th, Thursday at 630. I'll call the roll again so people can hear it this time. Ben. Here. Tony. Here. Mike. Here. Ruth. Here. Jason. Here. I'm Nick, and I'm here too. So, approval of the minutes. I entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes. Thank, Thank you, me. Ben. All right, Tony. Anyone have any corrections? Okay. All in favor? None opposed. Oh, so Ruth needs to abstain. Yep. All right. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. All right, thank you. Um, oh, superintendent's report. All right, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of December has included your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.84 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% BOD removal and 98% TSS removal uh, with effluent concentrations of 6 and 4 milligrams per liter, respectively. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of December is included in your packet. There are no concerns noted. Uh, attaches a is the annual summary of our operations. Last year, we treated a total of 601 million gallons of wastewater, from which we removed 95% and 98% of DOD and TSS. A summary of the, those past years uh, follows. Um, and it's been fairly consistent, although this, is, this was the highest uh, amount of flow that we have treated in the, uh, to record, actually. Uh, our cost of conveying and treating the wastewater last year averaged, again, less than a one cent per gallon. This is based on the total flow treated, the uh, 601 million gallons, and our uh, total actual expenses, including operation debt service and capital expenditures. In 2023, we continued to haul our dewatered sludge off-site. Uh, last year, we hauled uh, 2,300 tons of uh, sludge uh, in the equivalent of 3,316 cubic yards for, at a total cost of $401,000, overall. Um, let's see. Uh, we've also, over the years, been monitoring pump plugs, although I'll probably start stop reporting this after this year because um, in the last number of years we have complete this has be, hasn't become an it hasn't been an issue. Uh, we had four plug pump events over the year with zero of them being attributed to wipes, um, considering we have 26 pump stations. That's uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, we had two historic storms uh, this past week, which uh, caused significant damage throughout the state. Uh, regarding the district, we, treat, we treated uh, 3.5 million gallons per day on the 10th, and 4 million on the 13th, and, and 4.1 on the 14th. Typically, we treat about 1.5, 1.6 million gallons a day, so there was quite an increase um, the plant handled all these additional flows fine with no operational issues. However, the collection system did not fare as well. Uh, the pump station at Higgins Beach flooded, making the station inoperable. 
and the Pine Point area flooded completing, completely inundating our collection system there. I do have a few photos here that I can show you and the audience. Let's see, I'll get this going. Um, I'll wait. There we go. Yep. So uh, this is a picture of our pump station, which is uh, located at 23 uh, Champion Road in Higgins Beach. Um, it's basically at the end of this person's driveway. Um, you can see the top of the generator just left of the uh, passenger side door uh, that's opened. Um, this is looking down the wet well once the tide had receded. You can see the, the uh, flood mark inside the, the, what it's supposed to be, it's called the dry well, um, which is not so dry. Um, this is the transfer switch for the generator, and you can see the line inside, the water line inside uh, the bottom of the transfer switch. Um, and you can see it on the outside. This is actually the, the, the second storm was another foot higher. You can see where that the water level was on that one. The water ended up enter, entering into the uh, dry well through that vent. That's the vent that's used on the blower when we enter into a pump station. Uh, that, that's um, where, where, where the damage occurred. So that's just looking down. You can see the the mess that the water raised and on, on all of our equipment. So that the day of the storm, we ended up pulling the pumps and the, um, decoupling the, the motors off the, the impellers. Uh, they are currently in a, at a motor shop being dried out. It looks like the motors, we actually got them out into a shop quick enough that we're able to salvage the motors and we'll, we'll be able to reuse them. We, we will not be able to reuse the VFDs or the control panel or the alarm controls. Um, they all have to be replaced. I do have a contract with Wooden and Kern that I executed to design a new control panel to be located above grade versus inside the wet well. Oddly enough, both uh, Cumberland County Emergency Management Agency and FEMA, we've met with both agencies and um, they only actually fund replacement in kind which is not really an appropriate approach uh, so I am working with a, I worked I met with a couple of pump vendors uh, over the last couple of days uh, to look at submersible pump options that uh, that we can put submersibles inside the dry well. It's called the dry pit submersible application. So uh, we'll see where that unfolds. But I'm, I'm not going to build a control panel to put down into the wet well again. I think that's just foolish. Uh, we do have some, we can cobble together some uh, controls to get these pumps back up and running based on leftover components from other pump stations while the new control panel is being built. So we'll get that going as soon as possible. This is a setup uh, we did the day after the first storm. Uh, knowing that the tide was going to be higher, we actually placed the, the engine-driven pump on a trailer to try to elevate a little bit. And we only chose to locate one of the engine-driven pumps just in case it uh, was even worse. Um, and there's actually... Well, Did this you do that because you left it on that during the storm? Yeah, so after the first storm, knowing the tides were going to be higher at the second storm, we actually elevated the, the pump to, right. to get yeah. another 18 inches, 2 feet. Yeah. Um, and it actually panned out in, in our favor. The water elevation came up to the um, basically the hub of the, uh, the, the pump. So... Right, right at the hub of the wheel. So the, the bottom of the frame actually got touched by, by water. So the, the trailer was fully submerged. Good thing it's rain for rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was able to rent those the night of the first storm. I found a, um, a vendor out in Massachusetts, thanks to Underwood, who um, uh, 
put out some feelers for me and I got a hold of them and I was able to get those on site by noon the next day. So um, this is a house down in Pine Point that flooded out the, the during the second storm. Um, 10, 10 Bay Street, I believe it was. Uh, you can see the, um, the marsh grass made it all the way up to the back of my tire. Uh, you can see where the manhole is right in front of the person's house, and this is the house that actually flooded out there on the left. So the, the water level basically was sitting, you know, two feet on top of the manhole and just uh, entered the system and flooded out of her house through the uh, through her sewer surface, flooded out of her basement. And this is our manhole down on, um, I'm forgetting the name of the street, in Higgins Beach. Bayview, thank you. Um, that the, uh, the basically the top got ripped off of, and uh, um, you know we four feet of seawater sitting on top of it. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, Galen from DEP said it's a real life cross section. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, um, it's quite the happily put. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've cut that out and lowered the frame back on top of the manhole cover. There's, there's obviously, the work hasn't been completed in and around that area. So uh, you can actually see that the water elevation from the second storm is matched up with the, um, the, the frame right there. Um, and during the second storm, it's kind of interesting. During the first storm, Higgins Beach really got hit hard. During the second storm, Pine Point really suffered a lot of flooding. Um, so uh, the town had asked if we could utilize our, our second uh, pump to help uh, re alleviate some of that flooding. And that's Josh um, down there helping out with that. So Josh and Carl and Sean uh, and um, Phil actually worked real hard on that that Saturday, um, just keeping everything going. So a lot of kudos to them. Uh, and that's just a picture of our pump station. So that was an interesting time. We I did reach out to our insurance. Uh, we do have flood insurance on that pump station. There is a $25,000 deductible. Um, like with FEMA and uh, Cumberland County Emergency Management, um, it only covers in-kind placement replacement. So we'll be keeping cost track of costs to um, use that money to uh, um, pay down some of the improvements that we will make. You know, flood improvements that we will make to that pump station and. Uh, that's all I have on that. Well, any questions for the superintendent? Go ahead, Ben. Just a comment that uh, Josh Roy's wipes flyer that went out about a year ago, it, it looks like it worked. No, no wipes clogging. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? About a, about a year ago he I sent do. that out. It yep. was a good, good flyer. A good Thank flyer. you, Josh. Any other questions? Go ahead, Joe. Dave, do you know what the uh, enclosure rating is for that switch for that cabinet? Like, I, I, obviously, it's not meant to be submerged, but I don't know what the enclosure rating. And you know, um, it's it's weatherproof. I I know that because um, it was always intended to be outside. Right. Um, All right. I just didn't know if maybe it might be uh, good to look at like a higher NEMA enclosure rating, like yeah. like a four or six or better or something. Just I'm. Um, Guessing that we're going to have a tide problem moving forward. So, good idea. Um, I had a comment about FEMA replacing in kind. Mm -hmm. They can replace in kind, but you can always install it somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, if you buy, first of all, if you buy submersible pumps and throw them in the drywall, that's replacement in kind. It's a pump for a pump. If you buy a control panel, and instead of installing it down in the can, you install it up high above ground, it's still replacement in kind. You're just relocating. Well, there is a big cost difference between 
rebuilding a panel to be down and down below and, and putting and one putting up, up one up right. above with I would, um, you know, my my uh, I think we could get, rebuild the existing panel in kind and install it inside the pump station for about $15,000. Uh, you were probably looking at a $50,000 control panel above grade in a weatherproof enclosure mounted on, you know, suitable um, fixtures to, um, and uh, so there, yeah. there is a bit, there is, you know, that the insurance companies won't look at that as being in, in kind. No, but um, <laughs> it, with f respect to FEMA, FEMA looks at two different things. Mm -hmm. The first is the recovery, where it's replacement in kind. But the second part of it is mitigation. You know, mitigation is doing things like raising the electronics out of the wet, dry well and putting it above ground mm -hmm. at a higher elevation. What you did with the generator when you put it at the station when you elevated it above on that, what, a two-foot pad or a three-foot foot pad, that's mitigation. Mm -hmm. They will pay for that under a separate arm. Just something to think about. As at the same talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do want to give a shout-out to um, um, the, I, I forget the house number, and I, I, can't, I can't think of his name, but it's the, our pump station's at 23, Champion Street, the house to the left of that, also at the very end, they're, they're the same family. Um, they're allowing us to use their electricity to run our telemetry um, and some pumps and, and uh, um, because we, we, we don't have electricity right there right now. So instead of running a generator down there all the time, it, it, you know, I called them up and I asked if we could plug into one of his outside outlets. And so he, he, you know, he was very accommodating that way. Um, at 23, when we were hauling septage, um, the with the softness of the soils at the time, because of all the flooding, um, we, you know, we did end up ruining the driveway and, and uh, that leads that down to our pump station. So that is one of the items that's included in the uh, FEMA costs. Mm -hmm. uh, I also did include the additional flow that we treated through the treatment plant as part of FEMA cost, because um, the flows went, you know, there were 3 million one day, 4 million another, and 4.1. Um, and as I had just calculated, you know, our cost of treatment is about a, a penny a gallon. If you add that, if you use that penny a gallon to all that flow, it comes out to about $80,000. So I included that in, to, in the um, schedule of values for, for FEMA. Nicely done. Any other questions for the superintendent? Okay, correspondent. Nope, nope. Oh, I got a couple other Sorry. things I just wanted to touch bases on. Uh, pump station number one, uh, we had the pre bid today, and we had, I believe, five inter interested contractors. So it looks like there's a good, uh, good activity on that project. Um, and um, so, it'll, 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 you know, and, and uh, quality contractors. So I'm, I'm uh, excited about that project moving 40 forward. And lastly, um, we do have our, our, our consultant that we're using to upgrade our website here tonight that will be taking uh, photos of the trustees for the website. So that is all I have. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, I jumped the gun. That's all right. I added it. <clears throat> um, for respondents? Okay. Uh, we've got several uh, uh, main DEP wastewater facility reports to talk about. The first will be our inspection report, which I attached. Um, the inspection actually took place last November, but we just received the actual written report. Our, our inspector uh, gave us glowing compliments to our staff and uh, their proactive response to the plant generator failure, which is I think it's kind of funny because Mr. Rico here actually just was awarded a, a, his staff and he were awarded an award for their reaction to a generator failure last year. So it's, uh, he, he should be proud. Thank you. Um, as, 
As stated in the report, Galen wrote, uh, being able to maintain compliance during a complete power loss last winter is no small feat. Credits to the entire team for the efforts to obtain emergency generators and to operate the plant without violating license requirements. Uh, the th second is the incident report for the January 10th storm. And um, it, uh, it, it was the, it, it was this storm that flooded out the Higgins Beach pump station, rendering it inoperable. We began hauling wastewater via such trucks the next morning. I rented two engine-driven pumps from Rain for Rent out of Worcester, Mass that night. We set up those, pump, those two pumps, and by 2.30 p.m. on the 11th, uh, they were running. At that time, we elevated the, uh, uh, the, the pump by... Um, placing it on a flatbed trailer, as I showed you in the picture. And I estimated that, that during that storm, we discharged approximately 35,000 gallons of wastewater into the marsh. The second report addresses the, uh, the January 13th storm. Uh, although the storm also overtopped the Higgins Beach pump station, it, it also severely uh, flooded the Pine Point area. One of the, uh, once the water elevation reached the top of the Higgins Beach wet well, we shut down the uh, engine-driven pump, returning it to service once the flood waters receded. We estimated approximately 10,000 gallons of wastewater was discharged in the marsh during this event. Um, and then the third report is with regard to 10 Bay Street um, for the flooded basement at uh, during this event, wastewater slash seawater entered the basement of 10 Bay Street through the homeowner's sewer service, um, which was caused by the historic tides that we had received. So that's all I have on correspondence. Cool. Any questions about the correspondence? Okay. We go on to new business. Since there is no old business. Oh, good point. <laughs> No old business. So we're moving on to new business. <laughs> so on behalf of Wellbit Rotundi. Well built. Well built. Did I say, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. No worries. I need, need new glasses. Uh, LLC, Gold Palmer requested district approval for a eight unit housing development consisting of one duplex house and six townhouses. It's town, townhouse style live, work, one bedroom dwelling units. The project will be built in two phases, the first converting the existing single-family house into a duplex, while the second phase will involve building the six new townhouses. The requested flow is for 200 gallons per day dwelling, uh, per dwelling unit uh, for a total flow of 1,600 gallons per day. Uh, I recommend approval with the following additions, the wastewater flow <coughs> allocation, uh, limited to the 69 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Any flows above this allotment uh, or characteristic, characteristics are subject to additional approvals. The existing building um, has, has an allocation of 200 gallons per day already. Uh, with that, the remaining 1,400 gallons per day of wastewater flow is subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. 200 gallons for phase one and an additional 1,200 gallons per day for phase two. The current capacity reserve fee is $19.64 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current rate, the capacity reserve fee due for phase one is $3,928 and for phase two, $23,568. Any flows more than the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Sewer, sewer extension permit and sewer service permits will be required, and um, an additional manhole shall be installed at the location where Unit 4's Y is shown. And we do have a uh, representative from the engineering firm here. Do you yes, do you mind introducing yourself? Do you want a motion on the floor first? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No Thank problem. you. No problem. I'll, uh, I'll Go for it. Yeah, uh, motion to approve based on the conditions outlined by the superintendent. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Cool. Now you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Trevor Gettig. I'm a project engineer at Gold Palmer. I'm here on behalf of uh, Well Built Rotondi LLC. Um, 
as Dave mentioned, it's, uh, I know my graphic's small. Some of you have, some of you have. Well, we usually get paper copies, so we're all trying to read it. On yeah, the we're all trying to do this, and that's what's it's what we all are. technology, I know. I, <laughs> I didn't put it up on the. The viewing audience thinks we're all right. watching YouTube videos, but we're actually. <laughs> I can move uh, can closer, I? But no, I can't. Right. Right. Sure yes. really do you have the, this? And then I can't see it. Yeah. I didn't save it to here. So we oh. I can find yeah. it in your email, maybe. Um, as uh, Dave Don't mentioned, it. it's existing uh, single family house uh, that will be converted into two um, bedroom uh, units, and then there's six additional uh, one bedroom work live live work units um, that will be built in the uh, second phase of this development. Um, as he mentioned, it's two phases. Uh, the first phase will be converting the existing house, and then um, in the upcoming months of construction, they'll work on the uh, second phase. Um, the existing house is not uh, touching the uh, service that is to the house now. Um, that's where we'll extend the main um, about 130 feet or so before it enters into uh, our property and serves the uh, six townhouse uh, units. Do you mind pointing out where the existing service sewer mains ends and the new main begins? And the plan for that existing house, once that sewer extension is done, is redirected to the new? Uh, the sewer. new house is going to main stay on the existing service line. Um, and the new six units that are proposed over here will attach to the new sewer main. How long is that existing service? Uh, this one, did you say, around the, the house existing? Yes. I would suggest putting it into that new sewer line that's less than 100 feet away. 100 feet of service, probably no cleanouts. You should have cleanouts every 75 feet anyway. I believe, and I have to look. Hard to see on this plan. I'm not used to reading on that. We have a, um, so it's a six-inch service line, I believe. Okay. Know. Midway up is where it brings you to a quarry. Yeah. I would still suggest putting a shorter service in because it won't happen this year. It won't happen 10 years from now, but 20, 30 years from now, that service is going to give them problems. Just, it, it, yes. It, it, yeah. Been there for 30 years. At the very least, at 30 years. Yeah, at the very least, it needs a clean out, if not two, at every bend. And that's something that should happen. When I see new developments like this in other towns, the existing house gets an improved service at the same time. Normally, that's what I see. I'm not making it a requirement. I'm just suggesting it's a good idea. You know, and I would... Again, this should be a requirement that we put a clean out at every corner, every turn. I believe there's, two, I think there's two two turns, and yep. one of them is where it bends from the six to the yeah, four. And that would work. Put one at every corner, and I'll be happy. You gonna amend it? We can ask for an amendment motion. For that, I'd approve. I'd appreciate it. So 
somebody. Uh, well, I've seen things die on the table before. Right, can I ask a question? Yes. Do we typically have services going into a main line? We don't allow services going into a main hall? No, we do both. We do both. Depending on the, the application, sometimes we will allow them as soon as it's going into a main hall. Okay, so Nick, if, if I understand you, you're saying keeping that existing service still tied in where that, you know, to, to the existing Y, to the existing 8 inch. But wherever there's a bend, uh, because it goes up towards the right away and then back to the corner of the house. Yes. To have a clean out. Yep. That's what I was asking for. Okay. Because so you sorry. know the other option is you know you give them a much shorter run, so that their service is not a hundred feet long, but forty feet long or thirty feet long out the back of the house, going to the new sewer main. So, okay, okay, so you're saying... He wants to bring it into the front of the house. You're saying discontinue that existing service and have it go along the back of the house to, to the right of the page. I'm sorry, I misread that. Well, wait a minute. It goes out the back of the house, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. It goes. it goes out the back. And, and it goes around the other side. And it goes around, around the other side. side. And what I'm yeah. saying is shorten it up. Keep it out the back of the house. Just turn it to the new sewer main that's getting installed. The excavating contractor is going to be in there anyway. It wouldn't take much. It would take a hundred foot service and turn it into maybe I don't have a scale on this thing, a twenty to thirty foot service, mm -hmm. which is easier to maintain. That's my. Point. I have a question. Sure. The for the second phase that. That construction, that road isn't going to be there, right? Uh, what road? When you're, you're adding your second service in, correct? Four yeah, houses. so so there's an existing driveway. Correct, um, right straight right there. Right here, we're actually going to revegetate this and move this driveway, and this is going to be the, the access way for both the existing that's and the existing about doing yeah, that is two And that's where the... Uh, Second phase of the during the second phase, then that's what I mean. That's fine, yep. I don't mind that. Thank you. If, yeah, that, that if j just to point out, if uh, the it is decided to go to the right behind the house towards the new sewer service, it would have to be constructed during the second phase phase of the yes. project because the first phase is just converting the, 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 house. the house to 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 a duplex yeah which converting it into the two units stays within its flows correct I heard you right it no the existing would, building it, it would be at they would add one additional dwelling unit flow which is 200 gallons per day beyond what's already approved for the line yeah, it's approved for 200 right now so what I'm saying is you have two condos going into an existing service that's over 100 feet long, no clean -outs. Can it last another 20, 30 years? Probably. But when phase two comes along and there's a sewer line 20 to 30 feet away from where it comes out the back of the house, that's when you should connect it to the sewer line, the new sewer line. Give them a chance. You know, a plumber ever has to go out and clean that line over 100 feet with two or three bends. It's not an easy task. I, w I will say that the purpose of using the existing connection for that dwelling unit is to not have to change the interior plumbing to the house. Um, connections I purposes. I can- I'm, And I'm not suggesting you need to. Yeah, I can I can look at what it would, would be for elevations. And, and I sat down with Dave and, and Josh down at the district and we talked about the existing elevations and this is a historic structure so we're trying to not touch the house as much as we exterior wise as much as we can um, and elevations and cover would be tough that's we, we talked about keeping this uh, main even through our development at one percent due to the limited flows um, which uh, you know as you get 200 feet down the line that's an extra two feet and that might dictate whether you can actually 
connect to that existing location without having to, you know, pump it mm -hmm. to get into that uh, new sewer line. Um, but I don't have, I don't actually have that number in terms of what the elevation would be. Um, I do know that, as you can tell, there's insulation to the other units. Um, that's because it is, it is pretty shallow there. So we made sure that in any places less than five, we had the insulation. Um, and that might be a challenge getting back to that existing uh, sewer connection. Um, but I haven't really observed it uh, okay. further enough to know whether we'd have to pump it or not from that existing. I'm not, what I'm saying here is that I'm not asking you to put a pump station in. That's not my goal. My goal is to make the existing service as resilient as possible. So if by gravity, and I don't have the profile of the sewer line, so I'm not sure. I could tell how shallow it was based on the insulation, sure. But that's closer to the house. If it's too shallow to turn it, and I'm not saying go into the house, I just get it on the outside of it, turn it to the new sewer main in phase two. Otherwise, you put two clean outs in at the ends. My two cents, if I may. Sure. I don't think we're in a position to make a call as a board on this without knowing what existing utility conflicts are. I guess that was my hesitation in making a motion to make these changes that you proposed, which I think is a great idea, Nick. Don't get me wrong, but I, I think it's, I don't think it's appropriate for the board to engineer hold up the this. approval on this yeah. and engineer this. When we don't know, when we don't know the whole story, that that was why I held off in making a motion. No I, I completely understand what you're saying. It does make sense, but I don't. I, I'm not comfortable making a motion to base the approval when we don't know the whole story. And I won't require it because you're right. We're not here to engineer this. But this is a comment that I have. Again, suggestions. It's not a requirement. You don't have to redirect that service now. That's part of phase two. Look into it see if it's possible. However, it is part of our duty as trustees of the district to protect our customers. And protecting our customers means making it easier for if they have an issue for their local plumber to come in and fix it. You know, I think there's a sewer ordinance that requires a clean out every so many feet in our sewer use reg regulations. I'm not sure. But I think it's either every 75 or every 100 feet. And now that you're touching it, regardless if it's a historical structure or not, you should bring that up to code, or at least meet that code. So I, I guess back to my original point, it, if we were to put a motion on the table, that motion would be based on re-engineering this plan, correct, as a no. basis of approval? No, the motion, the basis of approval would be just putting in two clean outs. That's not redirecting any flow. Well, the motion That's not would doing be to bring it up to current out. code. What's that? Yeah, it's meeting our, our ordinance. ordinance. Really? That's what That'd be it's the meeting our ordinance. Dave, did you look into what that reflection is? I mean, What's it, that? Did you look into whether or not it's far based on our ordinance if he falls into that, bringing it up you know, to the standard? I'll even I put it dot. I will put it this way. We don't even need a second motion. We just need to put in the motion that it needs to be meet all our sewer regs. That's easy. In fact, I think the motion actually includes that. So mm -hmm. I don't see an amendment needed. No, I, let... I'm with Jay and I think your comments and advice is good. I just, I don't want to get in the habit of engineering okay. either. I guess I'd be willing to approve based on the superintendent's recommendations provided that we go back and look at that, uh, the ordinance requirement. I would agree with that. You have a comment, Mike? No. Okay. <laughs> Looked like he did. All right. I mean, that's fine by me. If we look at the requirements that the superintendent laid out, I think it includes meeting the ordinance. It's hard for me to see. Uh, what, is, what is it? What are the requirements? Well, I mean. The flows, the capacity reserve fee, permits, sewer, per, by, by default, the sewer extent. The sewer permit. The permits bring in the code. Yeah, okay. So I'm fine with that. 
I'll let the superintendent work it out. Any more comments or questions? Okay. Next time, please provide the profile of the sewer main tube. I appreciate it. Yep. Barring no more comments from the fussy superintendent and the chairman here. Um, I'm the fussy chairman, I mean. Uh, I will call for a vote. All in favor? None opposed. Thank you. Thank you. And the last item on our agenda is the 12 month budget summary, which is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve the 12 month budget summary. Second. Thank you, Mike. Questions, comments? Barring none, all in favor? Thank you. Public comments, no public here that really wants to comment. So, uh, trustee comments. Uh, let's start with Joe. I thought I'd commented enough tonight. Um, Dave, I'd just like to thank you and the staff during the uh, storms. And uh, first and foremost to you to keeping us in the loop. Uh, as I know that uh, you had a lot to deal with during that time frame, but you were able to keep us informed and in the loop. So we weren't uh, having any questions. We knew you definitely would have it in good hands without question, but it was nice to know where things are at and what you uh, had underway already to resolve uh, the issues that you guys were facing and uh, the above and beyond uh, work for the staff to go and help the, the town even on the Saturday um, again just proves the work ethic and the team that you have down there working for you and and uh, the willingness that they have to go the extra mile so just thank you and the staff for an exceptional job as usual thank you I second that. Thank you very much. Yeah, at the risk of sounding repetitive, thank you very much to the staff and I do. I was uh, kind of roaming around with all the things happening, stopped down, saw Josh and Phil were at the plant, made sure everything was going well. Um, I know they had a lot of long nights and uh, a lot of extra hours put in there, so thank you to you and everybody else. And then thank you in advance for taking care. I know there was a meeting today that you were probably attending with FEMA. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of steps in this process. So thanks in advance for all of your due diligence with all of this and, and keeping the ratepayers and the district's best interests. Cool. Thank you. Ben. It was a really good month for the district. Uh, the handling of those storms was uh, second to none. And uh, the great reports from the DEP was, you know, very impressive work going on there. Thank you. Thanks. I agree. I, I think the district does a great job. You know, considering the situations that they have so many stations and, and they're so vulnerable, uh, every area of the, of the town, you know, so um, response and if they've done a great job with that and the staff has done a great job. So kudos to you guys. Mike. Um, yeah, to echo everyone, congratulations to to the staff for that great inspection report from the DEP, plus being able to handle these uh, wet weather events and uh, and just performing outstanding. Thank you. Cool. Uh, I will echo my fellow trustee comments. Shout out to uh, Rudy and Carl <coughs> and Josh, Sean. Phil and all those that spent overnights trying to put everything back together. It's a, char it's a challenging job, but it's gratifying. Thanks for doing what you do. Appreciate it. I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> all right, I'll give it to Ben and second to Jason. Thank you. We're done. Thank you. <laughs>